Hello, uh, welcome back to the class that is elements of civil engineering and mechanics class. Let us go with the next problem. Determine the equivalent equivalent system of forces system of forces and couple at A for the system of loading loading shown in figure This is 2 meter, 2 meter, 2 meter, 100 Newton. This is 200 Newton. This is 30 degree. A. Hundred Newton meter this is three meter the height is this is five hundred Newton this is five hundred Newton. So let us go with the problem. It says determine the equivalent system of forces and couple at A for the system of loading shown in figure. That is nothing but if this is the frame and this frame or a plate is subjected to a combination of forces. So what is the effect of all these forces at point A? because of these forces and also there is a couple because of all these things this point is subjected to a force as well as a couple so we need to find out what is the magnitude of the resulting force to which the point a is subjected to and also the direction at which the force is acting and also the couple or the moment that point is subjected to and, and its magnitude and the sense whether it is clockwise or counterclockwise. So as usual first we are going to do with we are going to resolve the forces. So here there is an horizontal force you don't have to resolve it it is already horizontal this is a vertical force you don't have to resolve it it is already vertical but there is a force here that is 200 Newton which is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with respect to the horizontal and this force I am going to resolve. So if I resolve this force horizontally and vertically, so the force will be like this. This is 200 cos 30 
is the horizontal component of the force and 200 sin 30 is the vertical component of the force. Okay. Vertical component of the force. Once this force is resolved, so we can forget this force. So let us take the algebraic sum of all the horizontal forces first, then vertical forces, then we are going to find out what is the resultant. So therefore, algebraic sum of of horizontal, <coughs> excuse me, components of all the forces is sigma fx. So let us start from this point. Let us go this way. This way there is a horizontal force of magnitude 500 Newton. That is 500. So it is plus sign because I, it is acting towards right. Next, if I come this way, no force. This is vertical force. If I come here, so there is an horizontal component that is 200 cos 30 which is acting to the left. So left means it is minus 200 cos 30. Okay. So therefore sigma fx equal to sigma fx equal to that is plus 326.8 Newton. 326.8 Newton with plus sign. That means sigma fx equal to 326.8 Newton. So as I said, whenever we get plus, then that horizontal force is acting to the right. And Algebraic sum of of vertical for vertical components of all the forces is sigma f y that is equal to so I'm going to take the vertical components. So I'll start from here. There is no vertical force here, here, no vertical force, no vertical force. I'll come here. That is 100 Newton. So it is minus because it is acting downwards. So 100 Newton and vertical component of 200 Newton is 200 sine 30. Again, it is acting downwards. So it is minus 200 sine 30. Finally, it is minus 200 Newton, sigma Fy. So once it is minus, so as per our sign convention, sigma Fy equal to 200 Newton should be acting downwards. So I will, I'm going to take out the minus sign. I'm going to simply write the numerical value. And finally, I'm going to write the arrow which is pointing downwards. Okay. Now I have this. Now I have this. <clears throat> this is sigma fx acting to the right, okay, sigma fx equal to 326.8 Newton and sigma fy 200 Newton acting downwards, acting downwards. And if you complete the rectangle, this diagonal represents the resultant. If I call this as theta or alpha, okay, that is the angle made by the resultant with respect to the horizontal. So the first 
the thing is we need to find out what is r and what is theta therefore from figure from figure so resultant r r equal to square root of sigma fx square plus sigma fy square that is equal to sigma fx square is 326.8 square plus 200 square therefore r equal to so I am going to look at the value which is 383 point 1, 4 Newton. That is the resultant. And tan theta equal to sigma Fy divided by sigma Fx. That is equal to 200 divided by 326.8. Therefore, theta equal to theta equal to 31.47 degree 31.47 degree ok so resultant is 383.14 Newton and theta is 31.47 degree ok so this is the force acting on this plate at certain distance from here it may be acting here or here that is just move this like this it may be anywhere like this here but what the problem says is determine the equivalent system of forces and couple at a for the system of loading shown in figure so if I take the moments of all the forces about the point A, I am going to get the moment. Then you are going to put this force R here exactly at A and a moment. Then I can say this is a force and this is the moment. This point is going to experience as a result of all these forces. Okay. So by taking moments of all the forces about A that is sigma MA that is equal to. So let us come with this force so this is the line of action of the force for a moment move this force like this that is extend the line of action of the force move this arrow and put it here and this is the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force from a about which we are taking the moment of that force so that perpendic perpendicular distance is 2 meter and 500 Newton multiplied by 2 meter okay that makes moment and that moment is this force is causing clockwise moment about A. So according to our sign convention it is plus. So it is 500 into 2. So if I write 2 plus or minus sorry plus or no plus it does not matter because it is plus. Next, coming to this, this is the line of action of the force for 100 Newton and from A, if you draw a perpendicular line to this line, that is the line of action of the force, this becomes a perpendicular distance and about A and this force makes a clockwise moment. So as per our sign convention, it is positive. So 100 multiplied by 4 with plus sign 
Okay? This one. Yes, there is an horizontal force. That is horizontal component of 200 Newton force, which is 200 cos 30. And this 200 cos 30 force is passing exactly through A. So the moment this force causes at A is 0. So I am going to ignore this. If I want, I can write 200 cos 30 multiplied by 0 because the perpendicular distance between A and the line of action of the force is 0. So now I am going to ignore this. Now I take this force 200 sin 30 and the perpendicular distance from A is 2 meter. So that is plus 200 sin 30 and the perpendicular distance is 2 meter. So are we done with this? No, not yet. See for sigma fx and for sigma fy, we only took the forces because sigma fx and sigma fy are the algebraic sum of the forces in the x and y directions. Only the forces. So we did not consider this moment. There is a moment here. But at this place, you need to consider that moment. Okay. So how that moment is acting? It is acting clockwise direction. What is the magnitude? That is 100 Newton meter acting clockwise at this point. When you take the moment, take the value as it, take that moment value as it is without multiplying that by any distance. You are not supposed to multiply that because it is already a moment. It is constant at every point. Okay. So 100 Newton meter clockwise so it is plus 100 Newton meter it is plus 100 Newton meter therefore Sigma ma equal to the value of this is 1700 Newton meter 700 Newton meter with plus sign this is plus what it means that is sigma ma equal to one thousand seven hundred Newton meter clockwise. Okay, once this is done, it is over. Finally, you write a figure. Okay, this is 6 meter, and this is 2 meter, okay, this is the resultant acting, so what is the magnitude of the resultant, the magnitude of the resultant is 326. Sorry, 383.14, 383.14 Newton, and it is making an angle of 31.47 degree. 31.47 degree with respect to the horizontal. So, in addition to that, this point A is subjected to a clockwise moment of 1700 Newton meter. This completes the problem. We will go with the next problem.
the forces acting on one meter length of a dam of a dam are shown are shown in figure are shown in figure determine the resultant force Determine the resultant force acting on the dam. Calculate the point of intersection intersection of the resultant with the base with the base this is solution One point two five meter. <clears throat> I'm going to call this as C. C. The problem says the forces acting on one meter length of a dam. Of course, a dam will have several meters, hundreds of meters length. Okay. For analysis purpose, what we do is we are going to consider only one meter width. That is one meter width perpendicular to the board. Further, it says are shown in figure. Determine the resultant force acting on the dam. Calculate the point of intersection of the resultant with the base. So, 
this dam is going to be subjected to different kinds of forces. Here, if you take this 50 kN, possibly it is water force or water pressure and the resultant of the water pressure is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the bottom or from the base. And there is 120 kN, that is the self weight. And this is 30 kilo Newton acting perpendicular to the surface. Okay, possibly this is the soil pressure. So, as a result of all these forces, there is going to be a resultant force. The resultant force will be acting somewhere here. So, for dam, for stability purposes, we make sure the resultant falls within this base width, especially between the middle third. Okay. So, what I can say is confidently, the resultant will be like this. So, what the problem says is, find out the resultant and find out the position of the resultant, that is, at what point along the base the resultant hits that means where this and this come in contact so that distance i need to find out so as usual just we are going to go with sigma fx equal to whatever the value and sigma fy equal to whatever the value we get to start with so now Sigma fx, I am not going to write algebraic sum of the components of all the forces, etc, etc. Sigma fx, so one force horizontal, this is a force vertical which I don't worry about now. There is a force here, 30 kN. So, I need to resolve this force. To resolve this force, I need to know the angle with respect to the horizontal as well as with respect to the vertical. So, if I draw a line like this, a line parallel to the base, then this is 60 degree because these two are alternate angles. If I take this, this is 90 degree. Therefore, 90 minus of 60 is 30 degree that is the angle 30 kilo Newton load makes with respect to the horizontal. So, if I resolve this force horizontally, it becomes 30 cos 30 acting to the left and vertical component is 30 sin 30 acting downwards. So, when I need or when I take moment, so I need distances, vertical distances. So, for that what I do is I am going to find out this distance. So, that is sin 60 equal to opposite side by hypotenuse that is 1.25 meter given. Okay. So, opposite side becomes 1.083 meter. 1.083 meter. Okay. Similarly, if I find out what is this, this is the horizontal distance. So, that, that is 1.25 cos 60, that is 0 0.625 meter. 0 0.625 meter. Now, this is known, this is known, we know the angle. So, now I am going to take what is sigma fx. So, what are the horizontal forces? 50 kN, it is acting to the right, 50. Okay, and if I take the horizontal component of this, it is 30 cos 30 and the horizontal component will be acting to the left. So, it is minus 30 cos 30. I do not see any other, any other horizontal force. So, finally, that is equal to 24.02 kilo Newton. 24.02 kilonewton with positive sign that means 
sigma f x equal to 24.02 kilo newton positive means this force is acting to the right and sigma f y that is the algebraic sum of components of vertical components of all the forces equal to this is minus 120 again minus 30 sin 30 that is minus 120 minus 30 sin 30 that is equal to minus 135 kilo newton okay vertical force with minus sign means that is downwards acting downwards okay therefore the resultant r equal to square root of sigma fx square plus sigma fy square so that is sigma fx is acting like this that is sigma fx equal to 24.02 kilo newton and the vertical component is sigma fy that is equal to 135 kilo newton This is the resultant. Okay. Let say alpha be the angle made by the resultant with respect to the horizontal. So if this is alpha, this should be alpha as well. Therefore, the resultant value is 24.02 square plus 135 square that is equal to resultant r equal to 137.12 kilo newton 137.12 kilo newton okay and what is the value of angle theta? And angle not theta, angle alpha and tan alpha equal to opposite side that is sigma fy, sigma fx equal to 135 divided by 24.02 therefore alpha equal to 79.91 degree 79.91 degree okay so the resultant r equal to something and it is making an angle of 79.91 degree so this is same as this and the resultant is 137.12 Okay. Now I need to find out where exactly this resultant hits the base. So for that what I do is I am going to take moments of all the forces about the base O. Therefore moments of that is algebraic sum of moments. Therefore algebraic sum of moments of all the forces all the forces about O is sigma MO that is equal to 50 multiplied by 
2 with positive sign because it is clockwise moment plus 120 multiplied by 2 again about 2 because it is clockwise moment. Next comes this force. So this will have two components. Horizontal component is 30 cos 30, 30 cos 30 and is the horizontal component and the vertical distance is 1.083, 1.083 and that is causing anti-clockwise moment about O, that's why it is minus sign and there is a vertical component that is 30 sin 30, okay, 30 sin 30 and it is causing clockwise moment about O, so that is 30 sin 30 and the distance is total base width minus of 0 0.625, 6 minus 0 0.625 that is equal to that is equal to 392.48 kilonewton meter 48 kilonewton meter okay so i said if i take this resultant it re hits the base somewhere here so I'm going to write down the resultant here. That is the resultant R. This resultant is making an angle of 79.91 degree. 79.91 degree with respect to the horizontal. So I need to find out what is this distance. So if I call this distance as x, so there are two ways you can find out x. I am going to do, I am going to work out both ways. And of course this is alpha, alpha equal to 79.91 degree. So first I am going to draw a perpendicular from O to the line of action of this force. And I am going to call this as D. So when I divide this value by the resultant, I am going to directly get the value of D. Therefore, the position of the resultant from O from O equal to Sigma MO divided by Sigma MO divided by R that is the result. What is Sigma MO? 392.48 and the resultant force is 137.12 kN. That gives that gives 2.862 meter. 2.862 meter. Okay, so this is 2.86 meter, 862 meter. So if you look at this, this is a right angle triangle wherein this is equal to 90 degree. Okay, now I am going to find out x to find out x value to find out x value that is method one I said we can do it by two methods so method one if you consider this triangle sine of 79.91 equal to opposite side by hypotenuse. So sine of from the triangle in the figure in the 
figure sin of 79.91 equal to opposite side is B and hypotenuse is X. Therefore, x equal to d divided by sine of 79.91. Of course, here we know d that is 2.862 divided by sine of 79.91. Therefore, x equal to 2.91 meter. Or by method two, so x equal to sigma m o sigma m o divided by sigma f y. So if you are trying to find out x distance, you need to take y values. If you are trying to find out the y distance, you need to take all the sigma fx values. So sigma mo here is 392.48 and sigma fx is 24 point, sorry, sigma fy is 135, 135. Therefore, x equal to 2.91 meter. So, finally, you must write the answer by showing a part of the dam like this. You don't have to show the whole dam, show continuity. So, the base width is 6 meter and we made all the measurements with respect to this point O and the resultant is hitting the base somewhere at this point okay and the magnitude of the resultant is and the magnitude of the resultant is 137.12 kilonewton And the angle the resultant makes with respect to the horizontal is 79.91 degree and the distance at which uh, or the point at which the resultant hits the base is located at a distance of 2.91 meter from the point O. This is the final answer. I think this, this ends this problem. Thank you.